Well, as you can imagine, the Old Testament says a lot about the Sabbath. Uh, one of the things I think uh, needs to be pointed out again is that the Sabbath is eternal. It wasn't meant just to be one day. It was supposed to be uh, developing a relationship with God over eternity. Uh, after the completion of the creation, he admired his, his creation, especially those created in his image, and he uh, created the Sabbath specifically for them. And again, it would be an eternal type thing. Um, we read in, in Genesis 2 that uh, God created the Sabbath and he blessed it. Uh, he had great favor uh, over the Sabbath. It was, a, it was a time for us to be blessed by it, uh, to receive uh, um, uh, his blessings uh, in, in that regard. Um, also, the Sabbath was the day that was supposed to be set apart. So that, that's a theme that uh, occurs over and over again in the scriptures. And so you have these two key words, God blessed the Sabbath and he set apart the, the Sabbath, set apart in the sense that just as he ceased from his work, we were supposed to cease from our work, uh, to take that uh, seriously. And so these two words, interestingly enough, bless and set apart, we don't find them anywhere else in the Old Testament, except when we get to Exodus 20. And of course, everybody knows Exodus 20 is the place where the Ten Commandments are found. And uh, the fourth commandment uh, in there is uh, one where God says, remember the Sabbath. And interestingly enough, out of all the Ten Commandments, this is the only one that starts by saying remember. So we are to remember that Sabbath. And um, uh, what is it we're to remember? We're, we're, we're to remember to keep it holy. We're to remember to set it apart. Uh, we're to remember that it's for our entire household for ourselves, for our children, for our, our uh, rest of our family, for sojourners, people who are temporarily in our homes, and even for animals. Uh, we see that the, the fourth commandment tells us that we're there to uh, also cease their work and to celebrate the, uh, the Sabbath. And, and so uh, one thing that's interesting, when you, when you read that Exodus um, 20 passage in the fourth commandment, we see that... Uh, it, the focus, again, is on creation. What we just experienced back in Genesis 2, uh, we see again in, in, um, in Exodus 20 with the, uh, the Ten Commandments. And interestingly enough, and, and that, the focus of that, of course, would be all of humanity, because uh, we go back to Genesis 2, that's all we're referring to at that point. But then uh, you have to think of the other Decalogue, the other Ten Commandments, which show up in Deuteronomy 5. And there, it's very, very similar. We're to observe the, uh, the Sabbath day. Uh, it's blessed, and obviously, and, and uh, we're to stop our work and so forth. But then it talks about uh, the slavery to Egypt. You know? And so it's not all of humanity at this point. We're just focusing on Israel when you look at the, the, the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments in, uh, in Deuteronomy 5. And so you have this uh, slavery to Egypt theme that comes up. And, of course, that would be focused just on the people of Israel. And, uh, and of course, uh, the ceasing from work provides them with many opportunities to have fellowship with God and to lament before him and, and that sort of thing. And there's much more throughout the Old Testament that talks about this. But I think it's most important to refer to what took place in the creation account with the Sabbath in Genesis 2, as well as the two references to the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, where we're to remember them as it uh, was prescribed uh, in general to humanity, but also uh, with regard to the creation, but also in Deuteronomy 5, where it's a reference to the, uh, uh, the people of Israel and the redemption that they required to escape the slavery that they uh, experienced in Egypt. So that's what I would say with regard to the Old Testament as a good summary of what the Sabbath means.